My name is Mark Tim. I'm head of a Max Planck Research Group um, Network Dynamics in Göttingen. Um, I'm a theoretical physicist by training and our current topics are mainly the mathematical modeling of biological neural networks in the brain, um, complex disordered systems in physics mainly, and also the applications of nonlinear dynamics and principles of self-organization to um, autonomous systems and natural kinds of computation. The focus of research is between the natural sciences, computer science, mathematics, I would say. So the biggest challenge I, or our group is trying to attack is how neural, neural networks can coordinate the activity in ways such that they are useful for behavior. So the first uh, underlying task which is addressed by us by mathematical and simulational tools is how can single neurons coordinate the activity between neurons even though they are not connected by a, directly by a synapse in the brain. So how can different neurons create spatial temporal patterns which are distributed in the network. Yeah, that's right. So often we, we need to combine different tools from different uh, fields, actually from, from dynamical systems theory and mathematics, from statistical physics and from stochastics and so on, to, to join them and also to develop these methods further to address questions which are on distributed patterns in networks. Part of the fun of the research field is to really being forced or being initiated to talk to different people of different fields. You have to talk to biologists, to engineering people and so on, to mathematicians and you, you learn different languages and one of the things I like best personally is to transfer and further develop methods from one field to the other. So where you can use, make them appropriate use. For example, we have used uh, some years ago we have used methods from nuclear physics theory, which is 50 year old theory, to uh, extend them a bit and apply them to the question of how fast neural, how fast neural um, systems can coordinate the activity in a network. It is not clear whether it's the physics or the biological questions which are the most interesting. I think the, the most interesting thing is that between physics and biology and mathematics maybe, or computer science, there's a developing a new field on self-organizing systems or complex systems which, which are not well understood and where the most interesting, to me, most interesting challenges emerge. So this is also my motivation to do that research. The main things necessary to understand self-organizing systems are uh, first, of course, the basic elements of these systems, like if you want to understand neuronal networks, you have to first understand very appropriately the neurons. One of my colleagues in Göttingen some years ago developed uh, a theoretical experimental joint approach to um, disentangle effects of spike initiation, so how single neurons send their signals, and it turned out that this is very different from what people think like 50, since 50 years. The, um, the main task to understand general self-organizing systems uh, is, I think, currently unclear. It's like the step from standard dynamical system theory to advanced dynamical system theory, where we went from describing periodic orbits to describing things like chaos, where the view changed from following single trajectories to following qualitative behavior changing of qualitative behavior like bifurcation theory and uh, a geometric view, you only have an idea how the geometry of the space looks. There's something like this is still missing for complex systems, in particular for network dynamical systems. It is, uh, there's no common concept at the moment and we are working on several aspects of these concepts. Other groups are also working on that and um, my hope, my personal hope is that there are some overall concept like going from following single trajectories to following the statistics of trajectories, also for these high dimensional systems with many elements. 
The research days could contribute to being a petri dish to um, understanding, for me, to understanding the links from the natural science to the engineering uh, questions. I myself, I'm not an engineer, I'm not trained in engineering at all, but for example, just this year we published a paper on robotics where we used principles of self-organization coming from physics and principles of nonlinear dynamics from the applied mathematics and extended them to make use of them to control robots. So this is actually an engineering problem and my expertise was not the engineering part but the nonlinear dynamics and the research days here in Klagenfurt are very well suited I think to bring to bridge these different fields. Well Klagenfurt General the, the weather is very nice and the weather there is very nice and the research days are I think very well organized and also an alternative form of a workshop. The workshop I'm used to are essentially small conferences as was mentioned today. It's, it just runs as a short conference with many talks and very limited amount of discussion. Here the focus is on discussion and group work where you actually discuss and debate sometimes very hardly with your colleague. And, but I think this will contribute to further understanding of, of self-organized systems. The Max Planck Society is so successful in research for uh, different uh, reasons. I think one reason is, of course, that the directors are selected on a basis of, of excellence. So they are not selected on the basis of being particularly good in very specific aspects, but typically they are chosen to be representatives of a broad spectrum of a research field. So they represent not only one direction, they de depend, uh, represent different areas. Then they, the, the Max Planck Society is well funded compared to universities. So research is typically not stopped by a few thousand euros missing to fund this particular item, to fund some travel to somewhere. So, um, and this reduces also the amount of bureaucracy you have to um, you have to deal with. Um, overall, I would say that the Max Planck Society is successful mainly because they maintain and further develop a structure which is um, also adaptive, or is also self-organizing, with a, a minimum amount of rules, or like only course rules and not very specific rules. For example, if you get money uh, assigned at a typical German university, it is often the case that you have to spend this money 100,000 euros in this year, 2010. If you don't spend it, it's just lost. Uh, if, I don't, if I would get 100,000 euros this year and I, I have a three-year contract, then I can spend half of that next year, for example, to make larger project la next year and a smaller one this year. I'm very flexible. You can also switch between uh, personal funds and funds for travel and whatever you like. So this is very flexible and so the rules in total in the Max Planck Society also for doing research, which kind of research and so on, are very flexible in the sense that you have a, only course rules which limit misuse essentially. So you give the highest amount of freedom to the research in the Max Planck Society and this makes a very, brings a foundation for successful research I would think.